Thank you. Thank you very much. I am here today to share with you the transformative power of art and creativity through my work in Detroit, known as the Heidelberg Project. I've been working with this artist, Tyree Guyton, now for 21 years. And a lot of what I do is going to require that I share with you a story. I want to talk to you a little bit about the transformative power, but then I want to show you a little bit about what that looks like, and then I want to share with you what this work is teaching us, because we're still in the throes of this work. So in June of 1993, I'm traveling back to work. I'm a loan officer at a bank. I have bad news for my clients, so I'm procrastinating. And I turned on this area, in this area of Detroit, and I had a feeling of nostalgia. And what I remembered is that that was an area that I used to visit as a little girl. So I tried to turn down a street called Benson, and a car was on my tail and literally forced me down Heidelberg Street. This was in 1993. My mouth dropped open, and unbeknownst to me, the artist was sitting on the curb, and I literally said to this man, what in the hell is all of this? And I remember thinking, this man needs to get a job because he's got too much time on his hands. <laughs> so he says to me, well, why don't you get out and check it out? Militant, kind of, you know, kind of gruff. And I said, okay. So I locked my doors, and I got out, and I started to talk to this man. Nothing real deep and esoteric coming out of his mouth, but the children that were circling around him in this neighborhood, this poor neighborhood, were Amaze. They were amazing children because they were flocking around this man, not for money, not for candy, but a paintbrush. And I found that fascinating. So I went back and back and back. And a year later, I literally gave up corporate America, profit sharing, and all that to come and run an arts organization that I had no clue what I was doing. So this is just setting up the pretext and the platform for this work known as the Heidelberg Project and how that transformation first began with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a quote by Margaret Mead, and it talks about how one man, basically, or a small group of citizens are what, in fact, changes our world, the world that we live in today, and how it's advanced today. I want to talk a little bit about the history of this particular area, this street that I turned down by accident, historical community. It was a thriving community in the early 1900s when African Americans were looking for jobs in the automobile industry. So it was hustling and bustling in the 30s and 40s. And then came urban renewal and all these other things under, you know, and before you know it, the 67 riots hit and the neighborhood literally began to take on changes for the worse. But some of the residents that actually had their start in this community, believe it or not, Helen Thomas, former White House correspondent, used to live on Heidelberg Street. Wilson Pickett lived around the block. That is a concentrated area of our two-block project. Barry Gordy, this is where he got his start in this particular community. And Dr. Ossian Sweet, who was the first African-American man exonerated after killing a white man by protect, for protecting his property. So it had this rich history. And yet, the community began to take on changes for the worse. This became the pretext and the platform for creating this animal called the Heidelberg Project. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Tyree Guyton. He was born and raised in this community. He actually lived on Heidelberg Street. Came from a poor family, a mother raising 10 children on welfare. So, in his mind, he had nowhere to go but up. But his grandfather gave him a paintbrush at the age of nine, and he never forgot it. But what he did say is that he went on through life trying to do the things that he thought any young African-American man would do, such as getting a job in the automobile industry. He even tried firefighting. None of those things rang in his ears. He also talked about remembering his great-grandmother, Katie, telling him that he was going to be a great man one day. He never forgot those things, and that became the birth and pretext for what is known today as the Heidelberg Project. Now imagine someone literally taking two city blocks in Detroit and transforming the trees, the sidewalks, the houses, you name it. But he did it using found materials. And this is what I think pissed everybody off, especially in this particular community, a community that is recognized, let's see, nationally as being one of the most economically depressed zip codes in the country. The African-American male mortality rate is a staggering 55%.
What that translates to is that young men between the ages of 14 and 28 only have a 45% chance of escaping death or jail. So these were the conditions that prompted a creation of the Heidelberg Project. Now I said the artists used found and discarded materials. And what people didn't understand, and they're just coming to understand now, is that discarded materials became symbolic of how we discard people and communities. Well, what happens when you pick these things up and dust them off and add color and rearrange? You're literally breathing new life into these things. So I don't want to talk about organizational goals, but you can read them and you can go to our website to find out more about that. I want to give you the heart and soul of this work. Here's a the theme. This is resembling a church pew. The shoes in inside are resembling, a, are resembling the people, and the cash register on top is resembling big business. So what the artist introduces in his themes are the conditions in society. There are more churches in the city of Detroit than there are schools, so we question why our communities look the way they do. Faces in the hood, taking the old relics of the automobile industry and turning them and transforming them into art. We just came off a very successful art show, and works like these, believe it or not, do sell for about seven to $8,000, but the artist pours a lot of that money right back into the community. Children, art, community, and environmental education. We are teaching children how to care for their community and teaching them to understand you don't have to leave your community to be successful. You just need to learn how to create again. Community engagement. What our work is doing is it's kind of bringing a new science into our minds. We're beginning to think and believe that this work is informing us in such a way that we are now introducing a new ology, and we call it Heidelbergology. So the concept is, is that found objects are studied, and they are the materials that we use and we're infusing it into the fabric and landscape of a community. And then we're studying the effects on that community. It gives birth to three practices, abstract advocacy, art as a medicine, and art as a catalyst for change. Abstract advocacy, basically new information in the short term, it changes attitudes, in the long term it changes behavior. Here's an example. Justin was two years old born and raised on Heidelberg Street, comes from three generations of otherwise behavior. Today, he is an all A, B, and student. He is at Central Michigan University on a sports scholarship, but he is studying biochemistry. Now, how do you get that out of an art project? This is what we're, this is what we're talking about, art as a medicine. Men that are incarcerated, who have nowhere to go, who don't know how to get themselves ingratiated back into the community. They come to the Heidelberg Project and they get an opportunity to work with a man who understands their challenges, Tyree having lost four brothers to the streets himself. So he is teaching. And we're inviting other people. You know what? People that are under 35 don't give a damn about race, and we're a little sick of it too. Now we're talking about how can we take the society that we're living in, in this global age, and make a difference, and do something for the first time that really has nothing to do with our outer appearance, but let's start looking at how we began recycling the human spirit. They come from all over the world. 195 or 96 countries in the world, and 140 have visited this work the Heidelberg Project, but fires, destroying our work. 11 fires in 18 months, 11 fires have destroyed our work, but still we rise. Thank you.